Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode of Inspiring Our World. And today you're going to be super inspired because I have my favorite guest on, Mr. Dave Bolzer. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about Dave before we get going here. For those of you who haven't heard of Dave or know of Dave, which would be very unusual if you're involved with Nikan. But anyway, Dave is our Nikan technical advisor. He combines his knowledge of science, technology, and marketing to be a dynamic speaker, educator, and product guru. He has a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, but is articulate in all things related to science, while his MBA in Marketing equips him with business acumen. His association with Niken began decades ago when he met the founder and felt a profound connection. As a product consultant, Dave has been instrumental in the research and development of many cutting-edge Niken products. His knowledge on the benefits that Niken products bring to the pursuit of active wellness is unparalleled. And that is the truth, everyone. So I want you to listen up because today, Dave and I are going to discuss the vital importance of quality sleep. So, Dave, thank you so much. I know you have a crazy busy schedule, and well, I'm so happy you're here with me. I, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to, um, uh, most importantly, to have uh, another meaningful conversation with Julie. And uh, if other people can uh, eavesdrop or come in and watch this or listen to the podcast, and and they'll do two things. One, I think that they'll... Um, they'll pick up on the enthusiasm and curiosity that you and I have yes. in general, but more importantly towards sleep. And I'm, I'm here at home, I'm in my dining room. I've got my, my, my wall of pride behind me. I've got my, my family pictures behind me. And so I always feel good about that. And um, I think that this topic and what we can do about it and what positive actions. And this is what I like about it. It's we have the power to make positive changes in our lives where, where it pertains to sleep. And yes. when you talk about the importance of sleep, I always start off with a quotation from Dr. William C. Dement, who was an MD. He was, he's passed away now, but he was an MD PhD working at the sleep research center at Stanford university. Mm -hmm. So he's got credentials. He's got, he's got, I don't know, if there's street cred, um, I guess he's got lab cred. And, uh, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> so, and here's what he said, quote, healthy sleep has been empirically proven to be the most, to be the single most important determinant in predicting longevity, more important than diet, exercise, or heredity. Wow. And I just want to, I just want to pick that apart a little bit. What is he really telling us? First of all, he's telling us, Healthy sleep has been empirically proven. In other words, this isn't theorized. This isn't uh, what ifs. This isn't hypothecation. This is empirical data. This is data that he's gathered, data that has been gathered by the, the sleep research community, if you will, which points to sleep being, I guess I should stop gesticulating because it's a little bit, a little bit too Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I am, a, I'm half Italian, so I that's not it. a, that's not a slam. Um, it's the single most important determinant. In other words, it's the single, it's the most important factor in predicting how long we're going to live. It's amazing. It's more important than diet. Diet's important. Yes. Not, I'm not saying exercise. Exercise is important. Heredity. Well, the genes are the genes mm -hmm. and, and what we get are what we get. By the way, um, do you know how to determine the um, the sex of a chromosome? Well, it's the X, 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 Y thing. Right. What you do is you pull down its genes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hi. old joke, old, old joke. So, so when you think about it, this is mind boggling, Julie. It is the most important factor in how long we're going to live. More important than the, the great diet that we may be on, you know, eating healthy foods, uh, eating plant-based foods, whatever whatever we choose. Uh, right now, I happen to be doing the Mediterranean diet. Oh, yeah. Which I think is a good compromise between um, self-denial and <laughs> at least enjoying a meal here and there. Uh, 
I actually like the Mediterranean diet. I uh, it is, you know great. what, uh, you know what is interesting though. It isn't because of pressure, societal pressure, or or healthcare pressure. I just don't eat much red meat. Yeah. I don't. I can't tell you the last time I had a piece of bacon, and I love bacon. Yeah. But I just don't eat it anymore. I hardly ever have beef. I hardly ever have pork. Yes, I eat. I do eat chicken, and I eat fish. Mm-hmm. Um, although I do not eat cephalopods. What um, are the cephalopods? Cephalopods are like the squid, the octopus. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's because they're really smart. And my my daughter has my. They're really. You can teach an octopus. Oh, I know they're smart, but I'm trying to get to the point of like, why would you not? Eat that's them? why I won't eat them. Oh. And that's why my daughter won't eat them oh, because. Oh, I see what you're saying. She, the same reason. The same reason she won't eat pork. Um, it's not religious. She just said, you know what? I wouldn't think of eating dog. Yep. And pigs are smarter than dogs, so I'm not going to yeah. eat them. Or yeah. dolphins, or those yeah, no, or no, other, no, other, other kinds of mammals. Anyway, mm. so diet. Okay, exercise. We all need to exercise. This morning, because I know it's going to be hot today. This morning, I got up and I did my two-mile power walk at seven o'clock because I didn't want, and I was still sweating like crazy. But it's important to exercise. It's important to have a diet, and it's important if you can do it to engineer yourself the right set of genes. But that's that's a card that's dealt to us. But the yes. bottom line is. Get a good night's sleep because that's the most important thing that you can do to determine how long you're going to be on this planet. Yeah. Which I think is uh, it's an amazing that's an amazing counterintuitive to me kind well, it's of. It's extraordinary we don't talk about it more. I mean, in in our culture, I mean, it's becoming more and more of an issue because people aren't sleeping, so therefore it's becoming a topic of conversation. But you know, during our lifetimes, I mean, how many times have you ever heard somebody say what you just said that sleep is the most important determinant? Of well, I mean, I I have availed myself of the Nikan sleep system. Yeah. I have the Nikan pillow. I have the the Nikan. Um, pad yep on the bed the new the new pad that's yeah, on the, the bed yeah the nature fit i love it and and it's it's kind of a uh endorsement by absence um i know how well i sleep at home on my own bed and there's a huge number of factors there too but i notice the difference in my sleep when i go to a hotel yes or or i sleep over at a friend's house and when i get back home yes of course i'm returning home and that, and that's huge but I sleep a whole lot better in the Nikan system. Absolutely. Um, and it doesn't matter if you go to a Four Seasons fancy hotel, no. or Top Hyatt, it doesn't matter how no. fancy their sleep system is. It's nothing as great as our sleep system. I agree. Yes. And I take my pillow with me. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I Especially have to, that Makura I, pillow. That, that's the best to, pillow I've ever had. I, I agree. And uh, I thought. I call it the Maguro because I like sushi. <laughs> and so, no, it's tuna. Anyway, um, I thought when I got it, I would check it out. I would try it out. I would make one adjustment, one and done. I would make one adjustment and would stay that way the whole time. I'm changing it up a lot. Really? And I like the opportunity to be able to, yeah, I'm. That's I, interesting because I did the one and done. I changed it to what I liked and it's stayed yeah. that way ever since. Um, I think that I think that how one of the things that, we're, that, that I'd like to get into is um, what happens to us when we sleep, what happens to us functionally, what yeah. happens to us. And and I think if there's only one word that you should associate with sleep, it's restoration. Yes, it's restorative and all kinds of things are going on when we fall asleep all kinds of things are going on now we talk about most people know what REM is REM is rapid eye movement um, and actually 75% of our sleeping state is non REM so about 25% is REM uh, but that's you know we're in non REM when we first doze off and we first you know we're kind of in the twilight and then we go through uh, stage two which is the onset of sleep where we disengage from the environment uh, breathing changes, heart rate changes, temperature drops a little bit. Um, and then we go into REM, which is the deepest and most restorative sleep. Uh, we see our blood pressure 
dropping, breathing slows even more, um, energy is regained, regulatory biochemicals are released for growth and development, and that's when we start to heal. That's when, and I'm going to use the word heal. That's when we start to heal. That's when we start to um, rebuild and restore. And I don't want to just pontificate here. Uh, you want to? You want to? No, discuss? I'm loving it. I'm I'm listening okay. deeply. I'm sure everybody so, else is too. So then, so then I've got some, I've got some notes here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend that this is all in my head. Most yeah. of it's in my head, but I don't want to leave anything out. Uh, so what happens to us when we sleep? Brain. I'm going to start with the ultimate brain. Cortex activity drops, but the brain is highly active. Mm. Initial labile memories are converted. Now, when I say labile, these are memories that have not been solidified in your brain. They're 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 fluid, um, and this is a continual process. We look at all the experiences that we had during the day, mm -hmm. and we and we define information that's going to be accessible when we wake up. So here's it's let's let's call it this way. Sleep is the allows our brain to conduct the ultimate thought filtration. Okay. We we say, okay, you know what? I was ready to cross the street and I saw this antique car go by, and I remember what the license plate was. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Mm -hmm. And so what my brain does is say, okay, that's a labile memory, Dave. Don't clog everything up. Let's remember the important things. Let's remember um, your anniversary. <laughs> something, <laughs> yeah. something that's something that's important. Um, and I will say that I I don't I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna sound odd here, um, and that's okay. Most people think I'm a little bit brilliant, a little bit brilliant, a little bit strange. Uh, when I was in school, when I was in college and i was taking advanced calculus and there was one problem that i couldn't get i would go to sleep with a pad of paper and a pencil on my nightstand next to me and many men i'm gonna say every time but many many times i would wake up in the middle of the night and write down the answer wow and then in the morning i would wake up and lo and behold i had gotten it Fabulous. so your brain is working over time and it's working over time again to sort out the meaningful from the meaningless, mm -hmm. discarding the meaningless and enforcing, stabilizing the meaningful so it's no longer labile, so it just doesn't just doesn't squeeze away. You know, I I know that you're way too young to go into these kinds of exercises, but we're talking about brain activity here. I was talking to one of my buddies one of my business buddies from Tel Aviv, and he's a few years older than I am. And he's asking me, Dave, how's your memory? How's your memory? I say, you know what? It's okay. It's pretty good. But I do find that sometimes names elude me. Yes. Uh, and let's say, let, let's for the sake of argument say, uh, this particular name is an actor in a movie that mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about. Yes. And um, I can't, I can see his face. I can remember the performance, but I can't quite get his name. And so Kobe said, do the alphabet, do the alphabet. And I said, you know what? I've, I've, I've committed myself to not Googling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Googling is a crutch. And I, I mean, I love Google. I love Google. I mm -hmm. use it for, I use it in my business. I use it in my, but I'm not going to Google to get a name that I know I know. That's right. Don't so know if I'm saying, okay. Let's see. Okay, Julie Tara. I've known her for years. Julie Tara. Can't get her name. What's her name? I can see her smiling face. <laughs> and I know she's in Colorado. And so he said, do the alphabet. Start with A and picture her. B and go right down. I'll get to J and then bang, Julie. Oh, Julie Tara. Right. And that's what I do. So okay. it's good, in good there. Friend. It's yes. in there. We just need to hone our retrieval processes sometimes. Yes. And I think when we get a bit older, those networks, I don't want to say they get frayed. They just get detoured a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway. All right. So that's the brain. All right. Now, eyes. This is cool. Although the brain turns off the spinal cord neurons, our eyes remain active. 
allows dream engagement via eye movement. This is the rapid eye movement. So our brain turns off spinal cord neurons because if you're having a dream, a rapid eye movement experience, your eyes follow because that commits you to and it engages you in the dream itself. But you don't want to be moving your arms. You don't want to be moving your legs because that'll wake you up. Yes. So with your eyes shut and your eyes moving back and forth as if you're looking and seeing what's going on in the dream is important, uh, which I think is a it, it's amazing that that's what our bodies and that's what our brain. Yeah, is it's so too. clever. It's very clever. And that's the only part of your body that you can move without being disruptive with your eyes closed. All right. Hormones, adrenaline, corticosteroid levels drop, uh, MGH, melatonin, testosterone, F and, and all those, all those things go up. All those activities go up and get into a state of homostasis, homostasis, but a balance. It's a balance. So we use balance as the operative word there. And I don't know, I don't use any sleep aids. No, me neither. But I'm super lucky because I can fall asleep anytime, mm -hmm. <laughs> anytime. Yeah. And I will confess to uh, middle of the afternoon, like two ish. Yes. I will lie down and I will sleep for 35 to 40 minutes. It's and very healthy. And I it's you know what people used to say, ah, you're getting old. Well, I've been doing it for a long time, yes. even before I was old mm -hmm. and um, and I find it too, again, it perks me up, it rejuvenates me, it gives me energy. And I don't set this in, a, it, it, my body wakes me up and I do fall into sleep. Now I can't can't swear that I'm in REM, but it's a it's a heavy enough sleep. It's a, it's a meaningful enough sleep to where I wake up and I'm, re I'm ready to go. And well, you said you're half Italian, right? And in Europe, everybody has siesta time. Siestas, and, yeah, and but they all did. The shops close and it's so healthy. To yeah, everybody rest for a little bit. Yeah, after it, it is. It is interesting. I remember when the EU first formed. Uh, yes. Again, that's before you were born. But when the <laughs> EU first formed, I was talking to some buddies. We were in we were in Madrid together, and of course, the Spaniards had and still have uh, cultural activities, as you said, the siesta mm -hmm. that are very different than say people from England, people from UK. Where they yes. don't, they might have tea, but they don't go. They don't. They don't lie down. This is and true. And they eat. And they eat a proper dinner at six o'clock. Yes. Whereas the 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 Spanish might not eat until ten or eleven o'clock at night. Eat their yes. dinner, but they do have a siesta. And so I said, Pepe, what's going to happen when the EU moves together? When everybody merges, what's going to happen? And he said, Well, we'll adopt the uh, the habits, and we'll adopt adapt the cultural aspects that make the most sense. And of course, it'll all be Spanish. <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. Spoken like a true Spanish. Anyway, okay, Sorry. so we move on. Immune system, and this is crucial. Yeah. Uh, sleeping aids in fighting disease. And you know, if you've got a cold, you're feeling sick, um, you not only can do your best fighting, you do your best recovery by sleeping by getting by getting a lot of sleep and um it's because the immune system has clarity and it can find what it needs to find fight it remove it and um a, you know it's just it's it's another reason why you know you find that if you are sleep deprived let's say you're for some reason you're on a a red eye special flying from new york to la you don't get any sleep and you're sleep deprived your immune system actually degrades and it degrades to the point where you're more susceptible to illness uh herpes simplex if you have it you know those cold sores and herpes yes. once we get herpes simplex it's always in our system yes but generally it's subclinical mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't it's not symptomatic when we get sleep deprived and our immune system gets knocked out or gets knocked down then we start to see those kinds of things happen. Yes. Okay. We talked about body temperature lowering. Uh, your body temperature really does have to decline uh, a couple of degrees before you can really get into the deep sleep. Mm. Skin. We Everybody knows the expression beauty sleep. 
I've got yes. to get my beauty sleep. It really is beauty sleep. Yes. Uh, we're replacing shed skin cells, which are turning over all the time. We rebuild and repair the skin that's damaged, say from UV, being out in the sun. Uh, it all happens when we're restoring in our sleep. Muscles are relaxed even though we change position. How many times during the night, Julie? Guess. How many times do you flip and flop? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I have 35. At least what? 35 times. I know that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, we give tissues a chance to repair and to restore. <laughs> and then blood, of course. And I only bring up blood because we know that the heart rate and the blood pressure decline. But that's not what's really important. What's really important is blood flows, ironically, away from the brain because it needs to go through the liver for detoxification. Oh, OK. So, More so minutes. at night than during the day. Jen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you go to sleep and your brain says, OK, I need to shunt a large portion of the circulatory system through the liver so that all the bad juju, all the contaminants, all the metabolites that are in the blood can be taken, can be taken out and taken care of that's in the so liver. Important. OK. That's so important. Yes. All right. Yes. Gosh, so, that's a lot that's, of info. I like it. That that is in that is in a nutshell. Um, what happens when we sleep and why sleep is so fundamentally important. Um, what, and, 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 and we have, you know, like children need to like baby sleep a lot of the time and then teenagers go through huge growth spurts and they need to sleep a lot of the time, which is why I always thought the school hours were just cruel because they started so early and I was like, they need yeah, to sleep. And I think that they've heard you. I mm -hmm. think they're starting to change. I think oh, they're starting good. to say, okay, you know what? Asking high schoolers or middle schoolers to be at their desks uh, at 7.30 in the morning is, is, is crazy because we're asking them to then get up at 6.30 or 6, yeah. whatever, and they're not ready. They haven't That's gotten right. enough sleep and they're out of cycle. They're out yes. of their cycle. So uh, they're now starting to say, okay, you know what? The high schools should probably start at nine. Well, that would be very, very healthy. In England, we always started at nine. Well, school always started at nine, but yeah, I, I in just England in England, you always do things right. Oh, and... of course. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were in England, what kind of which, which part of the educational system were you in? Were you in public school or private school? Um, well, initially just regular public school. And then I went to the Royal Ballet School when I was 10. Uh, so that was a private school. Sure. And from there, I was boarding, you know, for five years from 10 to 15 and then and then the upper school question for you that I've always wondered about mm. when you when in, in Royal Ballet is perfect for this. But, you know, New York City, they have high schools that are dedicated to the arts. Yes. Um, some of them are music. Some yes. of them are acting. Like Juilliard and, yes. Right. And of course, the emphasis, you're going there for ballet. Yes. How much of the day, how much of the educational day do you spend on other topics, other subjects other than dance? Oh, you well, you have to. You do all your academia. Everything academic has to be <clears throat> covered and handled. And then you you dance, you know, at least an hour a day, usually a couple of hours a day. Okay. Okay. But you also have to have swimming and hiking and but also, okay. you know, your music, your history, your math, your English, you know, the, your biology, all, all the things we would normally do, geography and everything has to be in there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it sounds like what what happens in the U.S. Um, if you're involved in a, in a in the varsity sport at a high level. Yes. Um, so you're doing all your regular regular academics and then you put on the uniform, you put on the pads and you go out and and you you exercise and you practice and you run drills and then you go home dead tired and you're supposed to do homework. Mm. <laughs> what I remember, you know, what's interesting is what I do remember, and I think it was because of growth spurts and, and sleep, we're talking about sleep, is that sometimes we would have um, fire drills at night, you know, to make sure we all knew what the fire drills were. And so we'd be woken up with the alarms and my my body would be paralyzed. And I, I, I think it was because it was so much athletic work as the body's growing that that somehow at night it was trying to heal you trying know to restore you were to trying restore, to restore yeah. and, and and i would freak out and i'd be like 
hey, everybody, you've got to help me. I can't walk. I can't move, you know. And seriously. Like, yeah, seriously. And they'd be like, oh, you're just kidding. And I'm like, oh, no, seriously, I'm not kidding. So, and we never knew if it was a real fire or not. So it was a little bit scary. And they said, we'll help you, Julie, but you got to be up on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, you talked about how long how long children, infants, you know, and they do yes. sleep. They do sleep most of the time. Just they don't seem babies. Just don't seem to sleep at two thirty in the morning. Yeah, but um, that that's cool. that's so they can get their parent. No, uh, I think they would sleep. Infants would sleep continuously, but they have to feed. Mm -hmm. So they wake up. They wake up to do that. And I had these. I had these notes here because I loved it. This is from BBC Science, ironically. People like to sleep between 5 and 11 hours per night. Average sleep is 7.75 hours per night. That sounds ideal. Mm -hmm. um, I sleep between 7 and 8 hours a night. Okay, dokie. And, and that's pretty... And then I have my nap, but I'm not counting the nap. Mm -hmm. So if you, look at, if you look at other species, Python, beautiful, beautiful snake. Yes. Sleeps 18 hours a day. Wow. Tiger, mm, big that. cat, big cat, 15.8 hours a day. Goodness. Regular cat, domesticated cat, feline, 12.1 hours a day. Wow. Chimpanzee, mm -hmm. now we're getting close to Dave. Mm -hmm. um, chimpanzee, 9.7 hours, which is a lot. Yes. Sheep, 3.8 hours. Huh. African elephant, 3.3 hours. And giraffe, 1.9 hours a day. Wow. How did yeah. they fly with so little? Well, you know, I got a feeling that um, with the long neck going up to the brain and keeping the brain supplied, uh, their blood pressure must be, I don't know what it is. I should look it up. Their blood pressure must be ridiculous. And so, yeah, they're not going to lie down um and then get back up and the same with elephants elephants kind of and sheep and cows they kind of kind of sleepwalk they're kind of sleeping while they're standing you know they're yes. kind of get into this this semi somnambulistic state when they're standing up but um that's okay. fascinating information actually and then dolphins i think and well they do something with their brains that's special like half of it switches off and you know i don't of... know i can't i don't know specifically about dolphins but i know that the blue whale mm. undergoes a certain auto hypnosis mm. where they can calm their whole system down they can lower their whole the body their body metabol their metabolic rates and and this one is a little bit strange but it is thought that during this state this semi this this self hypnotic state they can also stimulate their pleasure center in their brain Okay. And if we had the power to do that, I, I shudder to think what the society would be like. <laughs> we would be, we'd be, it's like hitting the, hitting the button. We'd be hitting the button all the time. Yes. Anyway, yeah, so no, I know that whales, and, 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 and I think that there's certainly a school of thought that um, dolphins uh, are smarter than we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. They have a larger brain capacity, and, and perhaps the, the big whales are too, the sperm whales or the blue whales don't know mm. but, i think oh. the whole issue of the brain and the recovery of the brain is so important because we're seeing such a such such a growth in 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 dementia and alzheimer's and it's like wow what's going on with all that and i just think sleep you know we minimize sleep especially i think in america it's like oh i got by on five hours it's like a sort of pride thing i got by on five hours. i only need five hours and it's like well not really if the, especially if your brain is recovering and like you said all what's happening with memory it's terribly important when you when you when you if you talked about if you talk about it in terms of productivity they didn't get by hmm. they underproduced but they didn't get called out on yeah okay. assuming they're in a job where they're reporting and, yes. and and you know you know when you're lagging you know when you're dragging yes you know when you're sleep deprived uh it's not fun no it's not fun. so okay so, so 
Well, you know, I was, I, I, and I wanted to read more of this, to be honest, but, you know, I have the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, right. a PhD, and, and, and I've listened to him on YouTube, and I find him really fascinating. I, I, you know, when I mean, even the very first page in the book sort of knocks your socks off, you know, and I know that certainly in America and probably in Europe, I'm not so sure, is like th there's all these sleep clinics that are, you know, opening up because people are starting to realize this is a, a, an epidemic, sleeplessness, and we've got to figure it out. And I think that's Excuse fantastic. Me. And I think it also means there's a huge business opportunity with sleep, which I think is really important for us to understand, you know, given that Niken, one of our power areas of the wellness home concept is is our sleep and we not only have the the new naturist can you know the kenko naturist fit which i love but we, we you know we have the comforters that are extraordinary with you know regular and light we've got the makura pillow which i think is the best we've ever had we've got the pillow case we've got the mask the power mask we've got the cocoon which is fabulous actually today's my stepdaughter's birth i have three stepchildren and three of my own children it's her it's her birthday today the eldest stepchild and i'm giving her a cocoon for her birthday because she's always borrowing mine she loves it so much and i'm like i know exactly what i'm going to give her for her birthday today so i'm fantastic excited that's, yes that, that's fantastic well you know you had you, you mentioned the book uh, uh dr uh matthew walker yes um uh, and he's uh a neuroscientist you introduced me to him. He did. Yes, the other day. I, I never heard of him, and so I did some. I did some research, and I and I watched a bunch of YouTube's. He is a neuroscientist um, specializing in sleep at UC Berkeley. Yes. Which is the school where my daughter is a professor of mathematics. Oh, brilliant. Um, and he's so, English, which gives so, him an oh, extra credential. Well, I I decided after watching yeah after watching a couple of his videos, I don't like him. <laughs> And and I don't like him because he's a better speaker than I am. <laughs> uh, he's a good guy. He's good looking. He's knowledgeable. He's very relaxed in his yes. presentation. He yes. isn't. He isn't scripted. No. And he has so much knowledge. Yes. It just flows out of him. Mm. He doesn't need a script. And I saw him in an interview, and it was a, it was incredibly good. And of course. As we know, an interview is only as good as the interviewer mm -hmm. and the questions that they ask. That put me on the spot, Dave. <laughs> yes, and the questions that they ask and whether or not they actually listen to yes. the responses. Do they listen to the response? Do they comprehend the response? And does that evoke another question which is rele relevant to what they were just talking about? Yes. And so, yeah, so good old, good old Matthew Walker, good old Dr. Walker. He's worth YouTubing. He is worth he is. YouTubing. And I'll say it again, Dr. Matthew Walker. You don't need more than that. Go to YouTube, put in Dr. Matthew Walker. If you want to add sleep, add sleep. And there are a number of them. Some of them are three hours long. Didn't do those. Uh, some of them are just a little bit over an hour. Did one of those. Some of them are half an hour, 38 minutes. Pick one. Well, he's very passionate about sleep. And he says it's been a passion of his for many, many years. And the funny thing is when you start reading, he says, if this puts you to sleep, I won't mind because I know that you're getting the thing I'm most passionate about, which is sleep. Well, you know, you know what? He's he's knowledgeable. He knows his stuff, but he's not preachy. No, he's not. He's not he's not lecturing us. Yes. And he talks about he talked one of the one of the ones that I watched, uh, he talked about exercise. And he said what's important. And and he said, you know. There's no one answer. In other words, should I exercise first thing in the morning? Should I exercise before I go to bed? Should I exercise in the middle? And he said, it's probably better if you exercise earlier in the day. And he said, but the bottom line is exercise. Yes. And he said, and he said there should be a mix. If you can do it, there should be a mix between aerobic and weightlifting. If you can do it, like right. take a brisk walk and then follow it with some push-ups or whatever. You know, you, yep. you, you have your own program. So I liked him because he's flexible about it. I also like that he said, he fundamentally doesn't like sleep aids. Yes. I'm talking about oral yes. uh, medications or supplements that you take for sleep. And he said he knows some people have to take it, mm -hmm. but he doesn't believe that it's effective 
yes, you might fall asleep and you might be in uh, stage one or stage two. Whether you ever get to stage three and four in REM is another matter. But again, he's not lecturing. What he says, what he suggests is that there are ways in which you can, I don't know, I, well, I want to call it, it's meditatively fall asleep. That you can mm -hmm. train yourself to fall asleep. And he talks about waking up at two o'clock in the morning and bing, sometimes you're wide awake and what do you do? And you toss and turn and keep looking at the clock and wondering, oh, when am I ever going to get back to sleep? But the bottom line is there are methods that you can, there are practices that you can evoke. Absolutely. That, I'm, that I'm will a big help you go, right that will help you get right back to sleep. Yes. And uh, again, I I think it's I think it's great because he doesn't lecture per se. He's not lecturing to us or he's not talking down to us and he offers solutions, which is great. And let me, let me before as long as we're on uh, on Dr. Walker, I wanted to mention uh, my middle son Brian, who is the who's the chef, went to school uh, Brian was a math major, but okay, now he's a chef, but he's a very good chef. Um, he's very creative. And uh, he went to school, he went to Marquette University in the Midwest, up in Milwaukee. Uh huh. And one of his classmates was, uh, now is Dr. Kristen Lamarca. Mm -hmm. uh, that's L, capital L-A, capital M-A-R-C-A. Mm -hmm. She's in the San Diego area. And she's, her big thing is, and she does, uh, she does therapy sessions, and what they call lucid dreaming. And yeah. I know you know about this. I do. But I don't, I didn't really until yeah. I met and talked with Kristen and we had many, many good discussions and we had some debates and I, I, I don't think they quite transcended to the category of arguments, but we had, we had some good, she's, she's, she, I like her. She's smart. She's a nice person. Um, she's been to our house for Thanksgiving, uh, when she was still going to school out here and training. And um, again, she does, she uses lucid dreaming as a therapeutic tool. Uh, her big, I would say that her big population of patients at this point are veterans. Yes. Who have PTSD. Yes. And I have tried to do the lucid dreaming and lucid dreaming for people who don't know very quickly. And I'll give you a, a lay person's definition. Lucid dreaming is being in the dream state and realizing that you're in the middle of a dream. In other words, you become aware that you're at, that you're not, this isn't reality, that you're actually dreaming so that you can in some ways impact or steer the dream. Is that, is that right? Is that your yes, understanding? That's exactly, that? that's exactly okay. right. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done this and you know this, mm -hmm. so you can, you can talk about it. I'm not um, an expert at it, but I was very interested in it in my late teens, Patricia Garfield, famous book on lucid dreaming. And I was studying it then. And I have studied dreams ever since. And I'm part of a dream group, not specifically about lucid dreaming now, but more about the right. interpretation of dreams. Cause I think it's a huge area where we, we get a lot of insight and answers. Um, to, well, to I've had lucid dreams in, in the past, but I didn't know what they were. I didn't know there was a name for it. Yeah. Uh, quite often I have flying dreams. Yes, that's a good sign. And, you know, uh, like I'll be I'll be working out and I'll be running on a on a soccer field or I'll be running on a football field. I know that's the same to you. Uh, football and soccer is interchangeable and I'll be running and I'll and I'll say, OK, and I'll my strides will get longer. And fewer in between and I'm kind of gliding in the air in between and then I realized that if I pick up I realized oh man you are in a flying dream lovely let's lovely. go have fun it's and like I'll Michael Jordan when he would yeah fly oh, air. That, you know, yes, air, air in this case air Dave yes there and you I'll go. run and I'll run and I'll pull up my legs and I won't I, and I'll just and then I'll just veer off and I'll start going over the houses and Probably. and I know I, I know it's a dream I know yep. that it's a dream and I love it and I enjoy it. And I, to a certain extent, I'm, I'm, I'm cl clearly a lucid dream in that I know it's a dream and I know I'm in it, whether or not I'm able to actually steer it around. I don't crash. Nope. That much is good. I don't crash. Um, because I have heard, and I heard this when I was a little kid, I heard that if you're dreaming and you fall off a cliff and you picture your body dead, you're dead. 
And yeah. I don't know. I don't want to try it. I'm not yeah. going to try it. It doesn't I don't happen. Think so. that, usually, that means major transformation in your life is occurring. So the old you is 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 dying, and the new you is birthing. But generally speaking, no, it doesn't mean you actually die phys physically. So what does it mean that I'm flying? Well, I I think I, I was thinking about it with you specifically. Is like you know you're so vibrant, you're so curious, you're so open to learning and connecting dots and that sort of thing. That that it's like a flight of the mind, right? A flight of the the spirit. And um, I know it's extremely healthy for us to have dreams of flying. It means we're not we're not bound down by the constructs of the three dimensional world. Okay. We're still connecting on a much okay. larger level to many, okay. many other impulses and insights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think um, I think we covered quite a bit. We did, and we're and we're coming to the end. So let's just kind of bring it back a little bit here to 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 Niken. Like, tell us, Dave. Like, why has Niken focused? in this area of sleep that so few people have ever really focused and, and 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 they have been doing it for many many years so tell me about that well we when we looked at it when we looked at it initially and i i wasn't i wasn't involved in the original mattresses that was before yes. my time believe it or not there actually was a nikon before my time Hard to um do. i know i know that they took a look at how much time we spend in bed how much time we spend we spend a third of our of our day that's right uh, in in bed and and how important sleep is how fundamentally important sleep is to us and what could be done in order to ameliorate some of the environmental challenges that we know we have for instance uh the earth's magnetic field is deteriorating or we have buildings around us which uh interfere with the kind of energies that we should be feeling from nature and that we uh, we, we depend upon fr from nature. So how could a sleep system augment that yes. and, and support that so that we could create a sleep environment, if you will, that gave you the best chance, the best shot at uh, a natural productive kind of sleep? So it's it's helping us to reconnect with nature so yes. that we will naturally sleep better in in that field. And and I and again I go back to the um the the the, the Nikon system that I'm using um I believe in my opinion the magnets are extraordinarily important. And I believe that sleeping on um these ceramic ferrite magnets uh, are helping me, are giving me, um, creating an environment that is helping to replicate what the natural Earth's magnetic field should be doing. But yeah. Because I live in a building and there's lots of metal and there's lots of things in the way and it's interfering. And the fact that the Earth's magnetic flux is deteriorating it will be interesting to see if it flips. They're predicting that it'll flip, but yeah, but not for how many years is it? You know, is the prediction? Uh, well, I'll still be here. It's probably maybe 120, 130 years from now that it'll do that. So actually, that's quite soon, really. I mean, yeah, uh, it's it's interesting it actually, this whole flip that's it, happening. It, you know, and, it actually it actually is quite soon. So so yeah. yeah, all those things and and also you know you look at the position of the body when, it, when we talk about the when you talk about the pillows, the position of the body, the neck, and your head are are crucial You're, we talked about body temperature body temperature is important so when you when you when you had you had you had talked about you had mentioned the quilts before but we have the heavy quilt we have the summer quilt uh and those are important for us to maintain the correct body temperature which is crucial to getting a good productive sleep yeah. so all those things add together okay and and i think i think Nikan was right on the money Yes. In doing it. You know what? I, I'm going to, I hate to leave on a negative note, but I don't understand the Tempur-Pedic people. Oh, gosh. The tempur they tried the tempur that one. It's awful. No, but, 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 think of it, but think about it rationally. Okay. The big thing was this, this type of gel was in, invented and developed for the astronauts. Okay. okay. Why? Because when you're in zero G, 
um, you're not pressing down on the mattress. And so it's almost like you, you're, you might as well be sleeping on a piece of plywood. Mm. And so if your body can make an impression in the mattress and hold that impression, you're going to be more comfortable. But mm. that's in zero G. That doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing here on Earth. So why would I want to have be on my side and have the impression of my shoulder and then turn on my back and have this it doesn't make any sense it it doesn't and i find it very uncomfortable and also the temperature wise it's, oh, it's, it's like hotter it's cold, than the cold and then it gets hot and it's like so yeah. one of the things i love with our system is just that i always sleep at the perfect temperature i'm not too hot i'm not too cold it's like goldilocks and her porridge Gold you know? <laughs> and it's just perfect and that allows me to sleep very soundly there are a few things i do do like i do turn my wi-fi off at night before i go to bed i i try not to be on devices right before i go to so i'd rather oh absolutely no of course not. Book, not not you know and that's book. and that's the other thing that people don't we did we talk about creating the right environment the last thing you want to do half an hour before you go to bed is be on your phone yes texting or be on your computer on your laptop working you want to put that aside yes you want to have a you want to have a cup of tea or you want to have a warm beverage lemon juice lemon lemon water or whatever it is that's fine you want to start getting into a mental state that is appropriate for falling asleep but you also want to make sure that you're not stimulating your brain with wavelengths of light that are incompatible with sleep Yes. and all of these all of this electronic barrage that's yes. going on and so yeah it's it's just smart to do that and people don't yeah it doesn't don't. take a lot to just change the habit but you do have to change the habit you have to realize why it's it doesn't work well for us and and the other thing i i really notice is that you know i never use an alarm clock and i think most sneaking people never do because we never need to because when you get that full whatever you know eight for me it's generally eight hours it's just i i wake up naturally feeling refreshed feeling alert oh it's time to get up and it's usually around six o'clock in the morning and and happy to get up you know not like oh I'm dragging myself out of bed no happy to get up and then what I do is is I go outside I walk barefoot on the grass which has still got the dew and get just that that lovely hit of, of beautiful grounding and then get the early morning sun before it gets too strong and make sure I get some of that because I know that also helps regulate my system so that the next night it's easy to go and fall back asleep again um just because of the melatonin and and just this the, the cycles super important right okay should yeah absolutely no uh, no oh, no question about it should we should we end with a with a julie joke uh depends what the joke is this I is my this is one of this is one of my favorite jokes and i call it my julie joke and i think you'll know when you see what the subject matter is i've told it before you've you, I, one of the master days you've okay. heard it. but i'm gonna tell it again okay because it's because it's one of my favorites so there's this uh, Wall Street banker in New York City, in Manhattan, and it's lunchtime and he goes down the elevator and he walks outside and it's a beautiful spring day. And he said, you know, I don't feel like going to some stuffy steakhouse and having two martinis and a ribeye. I'm gonna eat street food and stay outside. And so he looks across the street and he sees uh, a hot dog vendor with a push cart. And he's got an umbrella and the umbrella says, Zen hot dogs. You remember this? No, I don't remember. Okay. Your punchline. I remember okay. the story so, about. So he sees Zen hot dogs. He goes, oh, you know what? I'll cross the street. I'll get a hot dog from the vendor and I'll have a little bit of fun. So he goes across the street and he says hello to the vendor and he hands him a $20 bill. And he said, make me one with everything. <laughs> and so, so of course, the vendor, the vendor makes the hot dog, hands it to him. And the guy eats and he's enjoying the day and he's waiting and waiting. And then finally he turns to him because he gave him a 20. He turns to him and he said, excuse me, what about my change? And the vendor says, change comes from within. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> okay. That's anyway, cute. I love there's it. My, there's my smile. That's my I genuine know. smile. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. It's fabulous. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you really enjoyed this and learned a lot. 
and do you study because this is a fascinating area of study and understand why our sleep system is so key to a healthy vibrant life yeah. also don't forget you can follow the podcast on spotify or google podcast or apple podcast and we always put these on the neek and international youtube channel as well so that you can translate into other um, languages and also you can watch us if you so like but of course podcasts are designed for listening in the car and so forth so thanks everyone for listening and we look forward to talking with you soon take good care bye thank you julie thank Bye -bye. you dave Bye.